Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Honored guests, members of the Debeki Board of Trustees, President and CEO, Dr. Virginia Paris, Senior Administration, Faculty, Staff, Families and Distinguished Guests. Good evening. It is with great pride and my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the commencement for the class of 2020. My name is Majda Altamimi, the upper school principal, and I'm extremely honored to serve as the master of ceremony for this significant milestone for our 2020 graduates during these special circumstances. We started planning the graduation ceremony from 2019, from September 2019 to be exact. We were all set, but 2020 arrived with surprises and challenges. But graduates, you made it stronger and united. And guess what? You've all become Zoom experts. To quote Open Winfrey, Remember, you are the chosen class. The class of 2020 will go down in history as the resilient class. The 2020 graduate successes were due to the guidance and support of the outstanding DeBakey faculty and staff. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the DeBakey senior leadership team. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our faculty. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our staff. Today signifies the culmination of many years of hard work and challenges for our graduates. This is a special graduating class of many firsts. We had the first open heart surgery broadcasted live internationally from the Houston Medical Center to DeBakey High School, where Dr. Ramchamdani, a renowned heart surgeon, performed a heart valve replacement live. And after that, we had a Q&A session with our students. We had our first ever astronaut, aquanaut, Nicole Stott, who took us into space for an hour and gave us a taste of how it felt to be in space and be thankful for the Earth we live in today. And by the way, this was during social distancing. We had our first educational project in London solely for our engineering students. Our students were able to visit several plants in London and to go through flight simulation. Another first is DeBakey scoring off the charts in the Program for International Students Assessment, PISA. PISA is a worldwide study by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development intended to evaluate educational systems by measuring 15-year-olds in school. Why am I mentioning this, you may ask? I'm highlighting PISA because it is the results of the class of 2020 students that scored above the national and international average for the PISA 2018 report. Congratulations, 2020 graduates. You have made DeBakey proud. And now, for the first e-school. When the school was informed that we had to adopt distance learning, like the rest of the world, we were taken by surprise. However, because of, of our diligent students and amazing teachers and staff, 
Our e-school was a huge success with almost 100% attendance daily, especially from our seniors. Thank you, seniors. As our graduates embark on their next stage of their lives, we are confident they are prepared to tackle any challenges that they may encounter in the future. It is with great pride and distinct honors. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the class of 2020. Welcome all. To start our ceremony, let us begin with a recitation from the Holy Quran. Thank you. And now the Qatari national anthem and the American national anthem. Sit back and relax and watch a short video put together by the graduating class of 2020. Thank you seniors for putting this together despite 
of distance learning. jump you don't feel the fall hope when the water rises you build a wall hope when the crowd screams out you're screaming your name hope if everybody you fall in love and it hurts so bad China has reported a 50% rise in the number of people who've died of COVID-19. We've had uh, the latest uh, new figures from Italy, the current center of the pandemic. Concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. أعلن مكتب الاتصال الحكومي في قطر تعليق الدراسة في المدارس والجامعات والحكومية والخاصة حتى إشعار آخر ضمن الإجراءات الوقائية من انتشار فيروس كورونا I was thinking about the band. I was thinking about the fans. We were underground, loading merch in that 12 passenger van in a small club in Minnesota. And the snow outside of first half. I just wanted my name in the star. Now look at where we at, still growing up. Still growing up. I would lay in my bed and dream about what I'd become. Couldn't wait to get older. Couldn't wait to be some. Now that I'm here, wishing I was still young. Those good old days. I wish somebody would have told me 
Hey, Mr. Nadeem, all of Mr. Nadeem is very happy. Yes, two stickers on Facebook group, so happy. Wish I didn't think I had the answers. Wish I didn't drink all of that glass first. Wish I made it to homecoming. Got up the courage to ask her. Wish I would have gotten out of my show. Wish I put the bottle back on that shelf. Wish I wouldn't have worried about what other people thought and felt comfortable with myself. Rooftop open. And the stars are. Hey, yo, Tug Beer. Tug Beer. Me, you, and that futon. We just begun. On the grass dreaming. Figuring out who I was. Those good old days. I wish somebody would have told me, babe. So young, maybe you always look back and think it was better than it was. Maybe these are the moments. Maybe I've been missing what it's about. Been scared of the future, thinking about the past while missing out on now. We've come so far. I guess I'm proud. And I ain't worried about the wrinkles around my smile. I got some scars. I've been Seniors, 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 you don't know oh, oh, oh. what you got oh, oh, oh. till it goes oh, oh, oh. till it's gone. Oh, oh, oh. You don't know oh, oh, oh. What, what you got oh, oh, oh. till it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our president and CEO, Dr. Virginia Paris, to offer the opening remarks. Dr. Paris? Seniors, it is my esteemed pleasure to greet you on this very special occasion. Although we are socially distant, because of one of the most devastating medical pandemics in history. You are making history, your very own history. Today, each of you has seen firsthand how important it is for human innovation, crisis management, self-determination, strong values, and more to thwart the challenges that we face on this planet and beyond. You were privileged to meet one of our great astronauts and witness the first commercial space flight that put new astronauts on a path that will soon allow us to inhibit the moon. Today is your time for reflection on all of the wonderful things that your teachers, parents, and loved ones have endowed you with to conquer your dreams and those challenges that will transform life on this planet, the moon, and even other planets. For the last four months, we have been sequestered due to the Corona-19 virus, but it has not stopped us. Through self-determination, hard work, and technology, you have proven that you are absolutely unstoppable. You completed all of your requirements for graduation under the most difficult of circumstances. No shortcuts, no excuses. You just did what you had never done before in Qatar. You proved that distance learning can be effective. I just looked at the PISA test results for our school. Our students are number one in Qatar and outperformed many US and international students. That is why I'm very proud to announce that all of you have been accepted into colleges and universities to continue your lifelong learning process. As you know, there are many challenges that lie ahead, 
but you have proven that you are more than capable to resolve them. You are eagles and you will soar above the rest. Before I end my tribute to you, please take a moment to thank your parents, your teachers, and others who help guide you through the rigorous pathway to your success. You are our future. You are the next generation of problem solvers who will conquer space, the oceans, the nano world, and human existence. To do so, you must not try, you must do. Never give up, especially on yourself. You have the right stuff. You are the right one. Now is your time. So seek the impossible, conquer your dreams, my dear seniors. I leave you to ponder the words of one of America's greatest presidents, John F. Kennedy, who said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. This is new age and so ask yourself every day, what have I done and what can I do for the world I live in? And then do it. His Highness the Emir once said, as a citizen, you also bear an additional duty of advancing the work and being proud of it to realize its mission in serving the community and the state. So my dear seniors, as you enter now into adulthood, know that you are blessed by serving your community in Qatar. I wish you the very best. I know that you will do very well. Congratulations, class of 2020. It is my honor to welcome our Board of Trustees who are joining us today and our Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Arthur Tyler. Thank you for joining us today. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce this year's graduation speaker, uh, speaking to us from Houston, Texas in the United States, Mr. Stephen Igo. Mr. Igo is Director of the Entrepreneurial Institute and the Cardio Design Laboratory and Executive Director of the Pumps and Pipes Program at Houston Methodist DeBakey Heart and Vascular Center, the Heart Center, and a senior associate at the Houston Methodist Research Institute. His responsibilities include development of innovative proprietary technologies that address unmet medical needs. Mr. Igo is responsible for identifying commercially viable technologies and strategic areas for cardiovascular design and biotechnology applications in which the Heart Center can attain a leadership role. Under Mr. Igo's direction, the Pumps and Pipes program has grown into a global professional organization focused on education and fostering unique collaborations between medicine, energy, aerospace, and academia. The mission of the Pumps and Pipes program is to provide a platform to bring together professional groups who may not otherwise have the opportunity to interact for the transfer of knowledge and technology know-how. The Pumps and Pipes programs are designed to strengthen the educational offerings in science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics, which is STEAM. The Pumps and Pipes Society has affiliated chapters in Norway and also in the United Kingdom. Mr. Igo received his training in cardiopulmonary and perfusion technology at the National Naval Medical Center and Research Institute in Bethesda, Maryland. He has held senior research positions with the Texas Heart Institute and Baylor College of Medicine. Mr. Igo was co-founder and president of the Cardiovascular Research and Development Inc a company that concluded preclinical testing of cardiovascular devices for medical product companies. He was co-founder and president of Cormetics Corporation, a Texas life science company. Mr. Igo has authored more than 90 peer-reviewed scientific articles and is the co-inventor on 22 issued and pending international and United States patents. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you, Mr. Stephen Igo. Mr. Igo? Hello, students. I'm pleased to join you today upon your graduation from DeBakey High School for Health Professions in Doha, Qatar. 
I love this photograph of the entrance to your school where the pillars for, su for success show cooperation, scholarship, respect, and citizenship. In January of last year, Drs. Arthur Tyler and Virginia Paris from your school joined Susan and Dennis DeBakey and I in a meeting at Houston Methodist Hospital. Here you see Drs. Paris and Tyler with Dr. DeBakey's statue, which is prominently displayed at the entrance to the hospital. This culminated in a live webcast of an open heart surgery procedure on October the 16th of last year. Dr. Mahesh Ramchandani performed a replacement of an aortic valve, and many of you may have watched him perform this case. I'm pleased to say that over 6,500 people have now watched it on YouTube. So today, I'd like to talk to you about mentors and teams, as they have guided and blessed me throughout my life. This is my logo bio, and we'll talk about many of these institutions that I've been affiliated with during my career. I was born in a small town in Iowa, and even at this young age of four, I was blessed to be associated with the older boys in the neighborhood who allowed me to help them build the soapbox derby racer. About 10 years after this photo was taken, a close friend of the family was diagnosed with severe rheumatic mitral stenosis. She was very sick. She could barely walk across the room without becoming short of breath. So she traveled to Houston, and Dr. DeBakey, shown here in his operating room, replaced her mitral valve with this device, which is called a ball in cage prosthesis. The ball traveled within the cage, opening and closing with each heartbeat. When she returned from Houston, I was struck by the fact that she was cured. She was well. She was healthy. She was vigorous. And even when you stood close to her, you could hear that valve opening and closing. Click, 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 click. And I knew at that time that I had to be associated with heart surgery. And so, I wrote to leading heart surgeons around the country, and many of them sent me reprints of their, of their cases and procedures, including a large stack of information from Dr. DeBakey. And so I wrote this up as a science project, and unbeknownst to me at that time, my teacher sent a copy of the paper to Dr. DeBakey's office. A short time later, I heard from that office, and they invited me as a high school student to come to, to, to Houston during the summer and work in the surgical research labs at Baylor College of Medicine. This is during the summers between my sophomore and junior year and my junior and senior year in high school, 1965-1966. In 1965, in the laboratory, there was much work being done with ventricular assist devices. In this case, uh, there, there was, the, the blood pump was uh, positioned between the left atrium and the axillary artery, where blood flowed in and then returned to the systemic circulation, unloading and allowing the, the, the heart to recover. Now, it's interesting to see that in this case, you see two ball valves in the mitral and aortic position in the heart. And there's also ball valves, the inflow and the outflow of the pump. The pump was pneumatically powered. It was positioned actually on the outside of the patient. It was not implanted internally. And the early pumps, as you can see, were very crude in many ways. They were held together with screws, but they worked. 
One year later, the Baylor Group was associated with, became associated with Rice University and their bioengineering group. And so here you can really see how surgeons and engineers came together. And what you see here is, is, is a really an improved design an improved manufacture uh, of this blood pump. During the second year that I was in the lab at Baylor, we got a phone call one afternoon and that said that Dr. Bakey was going to perform an implant of one of these pumps in a patient. And if we wanted to come over, we could watch the procedure from the dome. And so here you see Dr. Bakey with the pump. Here's another pump here, but with the pump. And this person is actually looking up into the dome where we were watching this case. Now over here in this circle, is Dr. Domingo Liotta. Dr. Liotta was the head of the surgical research laboratories. And he was probably my first professional mentor that I became close to. And my job in the evenings were to go to the vending machines and buy him uh, chicken soup in a, in a cup. And I would go back to the laboratory with him and he would build these pumps by hand. And he showed me how to do it. And we talked about uh, many uh, aspects of heart surgery and uh, the, the different devices that were being evaluated and tested in the laboratory at that time. Well, from that, I came home and was actually able to build a prototype of a ventricular assist device. So you see here in the summers of 65 and 66, I worked in, those, in the lab at Baylor. But then in 1967, I, I, I won the International Science Fair in San Francisco and was awarded the uh, award from the American Medical Association. And with that, I was invited to attend the AMA convention uh, in Atlantic City of that year. And there was a, you see here this brief write-up that appeared in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And so in many respects, this just really launched everything that I was to do forward from that point on. I was in, enrolled in, at the University of Nebraska. And um, uh, during that time also, uh, the Vietnam War, the draft was on, and I was drafted. And so I spent three years at Naval Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. During 1969, during that period, history was truly made. On the one hand, in April of that year, Dr. Denton Cooley at Texas Heart Institute implanted the first artificial heart. And of course, on January 21st, 1969, astronaut Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon. truly was an amazing artificial heart. Uh, you can see here, it was about, this is the heart that was going to be transplanted into the patient. And here's the artificial heart upon its removal. But when the pumps were open, uh, the, the inside of the pumps were actually, it had a textured material. And so the, instead of the blood clotting inside the pumps, it had this very smooth surface that was starting to develop. And you can see here the inflow valve in the outflow valve. And so during this time, as I said, I was at the University of Nebraska, and then I went on to be stationed for three years at the Naval Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. And that's where I completed my training in perfusion technology, operating the heart-lung machine. And um, uh, Across the street from the Naval Hospital was the NIH. And these three people really also became my mentors over time. Dr. Frank Hastings was the head of the uh, artificial heart program at NIH, which had been established in 1964. Lowell Harmison was a nuclear engineer 
And he also headed up the Artificial Heart Program along with Dr. Hastings. And then Frank, Fred Huffman uh, worked for a company called Thermo Electron. And this was a company that was building the blood pumps. Now, as I said, I was stationed at Naval Hospital, which is right across the street. And when it came time for me to, uh, to uh, transition out of the Navy, uh, a friend of mine and I were going to move out to Denver, Colorado and start up a, a, a perfusion group uh, with three hospitals. Um, but the folks in the artificial heart program said, no, you don't want to do that, Steve. You actually want to go back to Houston and work at the Texas Heart Institute. And so I was recruited to the Texas Heart Institute by Dr. John Norman, uh, who worked with Dr. Denton Cooley at that time. And I was senior research associate in the cardiovascular surgical research laboratories and also uh, was director of the circulatory support service. I was involved in the second clinical artificial heart implant. It was done at Texas Heart Institute in 1981. And here you can see me with another artificial heart that we were also implanting. Uh, this is the Jarvik artificial heart. Much of what we were doing involved the development of ventricular assist devices, and we wanted them to be implantable. Um, not only for the possibility of heart recovery, but also as a bridge to cardiac transplant. So the initial devices that we used were pneumatically powered. They were fairly large uh, when implanted inside the body. And you had this battery powered pneumatic console. But it was portable. And so the whole point of much of this work at that time was to actually get the patients out of bed. We were able to rehabilitate them and actually improve their condition uh, prior to heart transplant. You can see uh, this particular patient uh, on a bicycle treadmill. And then uh, he just walked the, the hallways all day, all day long. Uh, ran out, you know, we had to replace the wheels on the, on the cart a couple of times. Um, he just remained very active. He had the pump implanted for almost two months uh, before he got his heart transplant. But we knew that it was not going to be practical to have uh, uh, pneumatically powered pumps. Uh, it would not allow a patient to be discharged from the, from the hospital. And so we went on to develop an electrically powered pump. Uh, in this case, in this animal, uh, the pump had been implanted for 46 days. And you can see some of the, the, the tubes. There was a vent tube here. And these other tubes uh, had monitoring cables connected to this recorder. But the power cable was just a smaller electrical cable here, which was connected to this small battery unit. And so it truly was portable and the animals could exercise on the, on the treadmill. Uh, we did this at least two or three times a week. And this is a trace of, uh, from, from one of the animals, 152 days after the device had been implanted. And you can see the electrocardiogram of the animal. This is the pump rate, how many beats per minute it was operating at. And then the pump stroke volume. The pump stroke volume was around uh, 90 uh, cc's. Uh, which was, was designed to be used in humans. Uh, and in this case, you see rest to treadmill exercise. And so the pump output increased from six and a half liters per minute up to almost 10 liters a minute. And this was auto-regulated. It not, did not require any um, change in the drive parameters from, from a person. It was all auto-regulated within the pump itself. So we knew that... Uh, that this was a device that we could take into the clinical arena. And I was even fortunate to be associated with the filming of a documentary for PBS Nova, uh, which was in uh, October of 1983. Uh, we, this was filmed at Texas Heart Institute in our experimental research lab. Uh, we actually had what, probably one of the earliest hybrid suites ever. This was a combination operating room and cath lab. The X-ray machine is over here. Uh, you can see that the uh, producers and the, and the director, they have their hands on the X-ray machine here. Uh, and here I am, um, I was involved in all the implants at that time. So I spent about half my time in the research lab and half of my time uh, in the ICU in the clinical operating room. 
So here is uh, this electrically powered uh, ventricular assist device as a bridge to transplant. Uh, once again, it was fairly large, but over time, they became smaller and smaller as we went from pulsatile pumps to continuous flow pumps. And then that even progressed now to uh, magnetically levitated pumps and transcutaneous power transmission. This truly will be the future for permanent heart assist devices. As you can see here, this is a, a photograph, I mean, this is an x-ray of a patient that has one of these smaller ventricular assist devices, this is a continuous flow pump, implanted in the ventricular apex. The outflow is here with the graft that goes back up to the aorta. It's hard to appreciate on the x-ray. This patient also had an implanted uh, cardiac resynchronization pacemaker as well. So quite a bit of, quite a bit of hardware in the chest, but um, uh, certainly uh, this device helped the right heart pump and this pump helped the left heart. So back to my logo bio, uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, my other work uh, that, that went forward uh, more recently at, at Houston Methodist Hospital. Um, in 1963, when I was, you know, in the 1960s, when I came to Houston and was at uh, Baylor and Methodist Hospital, this is a mosaic that was on the outside of the hospital. It's beautiful. But over time, they built a carport and it became very difficult to see the mosaic anymore. And it was outside. And so it was, you know, uh, kind of exposed to the elements. And in 2018, when the new Walter Tower was being built, they literally came and moved this entire mosaic. There's 1.5 million colored cut glass pieces that went into this mosaic. And so the mosaic was taken down, sent back to Italy <clears throat> to where it was made. It was cleaned. Any missing um, um, pieces were replaced. And the mosaic now hangs in the Bush Atrium on the inside of the hospital. It's really beautiful. So the new Walter Tower at Houston Methodist Hospital uh, really is, I think, the hospital of the future. It's probably the, what I consider is the best heart hospital in the world now. U.S. News and World Report ranks all the hospitals in the United States. Houston Methodist Hospital is ranked as the number one hospital in Texas. The Bakey Heart and Vascular Center is ranked number 14 in the United States. We also, during this time, I'm executive director of a program we call Pumps and Pipes, which is a collaboration between energy companies, the aerospace companies, and the medical companies and, and institutions in Houston. We held an international conference in that time in April of 2011 in Doha, Qatar. And here's the faculty. It was an international faculty uh, from, uh, from all over the world, uh, United States, Italy, uh, England, uh, and uh, also, obviously, uh, Qatar. So I'm pleased to say that after all these years, I'm still involved in heart valve development. Uh, this is a, a device that we've been developing and, and we now have a patent uh, pending for it. We call it Mitromimics. It really does mimic exactly how the natural heart valve works. And here you see MR uh, images of a human heart with a tri-leaflet tissue valve implanted which is implanted here in the mitral position. You can see the struts here and here, which are here. And flow, in this case, is directed from the left atrium into the left ventricle toward the, uh, toward the ventricular septum. It, the, the ventricle then fills and then ejection out what's called the left ventricular outflow tract through the aortic valve, which is right there into the aorta. This is unnatural flow into the ventricle. This is not what normal flow into the ventricle looks like. Over here, you see our mitromimics valve. 
which instead of three leaflets, it has two leaflets, it has a natural shape. So it's made of a super elastic nitinol such that the entire frame will move and flex with the heart. And you, you see the one leaflet opening and closing here, and the other one over here. But instead of flow being directed at the uh, septum, flow is actually comes into the heart in a natural way. It flows around the posterior aspect, washes out the ventricular apex, and then right out the, 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 the left ventricular outflow tract in, into the aorta. And so once again, I wanna thank you for allowing me to join you today and, and talk a little bit about uh, the mentors that have been involved in my life and, and certainly all of this work <clears throat> that I've been involved, been involved with have, has needed large teams of not only surgeons, but engineers, and uh, it kind of touches all the aspects of, of, of medicine and bioengineering uh, with these devices. So I wish you much success with your career. Enjoy the journey, best wishes, and be well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Stephen Eigel, for, for that inspiring and motivating message. Thank you, Dr. Paris, for being the leader that is also inspiring and always leading us to great successes. The class of 2020 is, big, is Debaker's biggest graduating class thus far, celebrating 61 students' successes and achievements. These achievements were attained with the guidance of your parents, teachers, and loved ones. And in that spirit, a round of applause is due to your parents, families, loved ones, and friends. Graduates, your teachers have prepared you to tackle the increasingly competitive world and you're able to tackle any adversities that may come across. A round of applause is due for your teachers. May I call? the Chief Teaching and Learning Officer, Mrs. Nisreen Sabaita, to recognize the students that participated in the Hamad 220 rotations. Dibiki High School for Health Professions offers a college preparatory curriculum specializing in medical and health science. Our Hamad Hospital Rotation Program is a key component required in order to graduate from the health science track. The program would not have been possible if not for the efforts of one individual who has always gone the extra mile for our students. I would like to recognize the Associate Director of Medical Education at Hamad Medical Corporation, Dr. Amr Zahmoud. Thank you, Dr. Amr. And now I would like to recognize our students who participated in Hamad rotation. Amr Abbas, Saif al-Din Abdul Al, Ta'id al-Ajmi, Dima Saleh, Maryam Salous, and Fahed Amir. Maryam Arabi, NK Ardek, Tala Bakroon, Abdul Aziz Dola, Noor Al Muqaddam, and Mazin Al Raya. Muhammad Al Sheikh, Sarah Hasabu, Basmala Hussein, Iman Malik, Dima Murtaja and Mia Naamani. Muhammad Naam, Ahmed Nof, Hussam Nayim, Maryam Umar, Kareem Ramadan, and Aya Rudwan. Congratulations to our future doctors. In keeping with our American model, we present you the students that have achieved the highest level of academic excellence. This is our first year at Debakey that we are presenting you with the valedictorian, the student with the highest grade point average, and the salutatorian, the student with the second highest grade point average. Ladies and gentlemen, it's with great honor to introduce 
the salutatorian for the class of 2020, Yusuf al Hajj Hussein. Congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's with greater honor to present the valedictorian for the class of 2020, Maryam Arabi. Congratulations. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear administrators, teachers, parents, and the class of 2020, my name is Maryam Arabi, now a graduate of Dubaiki and a soon-to-be college student. Looking back, when I entered Dubaiki in seventh grade, I had a full picture in my mind of our graduation, with our dresses and suits, the decoration all over the place, and I even imagined how this speech would go. When I entered grade 12, this picture got even more real as the countdown for our graduation got closer to zero. At the same time though, this year has proven to be one of the most challenging for both us seniors and the whole world. The beginning of this year was a blur as we rushed to fix our schedules and complete our external exams. Towards the middle of the year, we were planning out our future as we applied for different universities and waited desperately for our reply. And then, a worldwide pandemic flourished and in the blink of an eye, we found ourselves stuck at home with our dreams crushed and our hearts broken. And after all that I have experienced this year, my message for this speech has shifted from what I previously envisioned. I won't lie, I am pretty sure it is very tough for all of us to graduate at home, especially when we have been fantasizing about this moment for as long as we can remember. But change like this is what makes us grow. We have learned so much throughout the past three months at such a tender age, and the lessons we learn now will help us better shape our futures. And one of the lessons we learned is that we only truly understand the worth of something when we lose it. This circumstance has taught us the value of life, the value of every day, hour, minute, and second we spend on this earth. We often take simple things in our life for granted. We used to walk every day to school, go out with our friends, and entertain ourselves with the luxuries of the world. But as the events of this pandemic unfolded, we slowly started to reminisce the small parts of our daily routines that made us happy and made us who we are. So I would like to be the first to show my gratitude for all the blessings I have in my life. I would like to thank my mom for helping me find a solution to all of my problems and putting me before herself. Thank you to my dad for being an inspiration to me and for being there when I needed it. Thank you to my siblings for not only being sisters and a brother, but for drawing a smile on my face. After very long fights, of course. Thank you teachers for bringing out the best in me and helping me grow both physically and academically. And finally, Thank you, class of 2020, for becoming a part of my family and the beginning of my journey. Another lesson that I learned is that in dark times like these, it is our duty as the next generation to hold on to positivity, to hold on to hope. It is our responsibility towards humanity to listen to that whisper that tells us that there is light at the end of the gloomiest of tunnels. And once we are able to follow that whisper, it becomes our goal to not only be the whisper of hope for others, but to shout it out so that everybody can hear it. We must be hope. Because with hope, anything is possible. And speaking of endless possibilities, I believe in all of you and I know you will be doing great things in your years to come. Just always remember to keep your dreams big and your actions even bigger. And along the way, don't forget to be grateful for all that you have and be that spark of hope that the world needs now and always. Congratulations, class of 2020. I will miss you all so much and I wish you all the best. I wanted to congratulate our valedictorian and salutatorian once again. It's such an honor uh, that you are valedictorian and salutatorian, but most especially because you're our first one at the Bakey High School in Qatar. There are so many qualities um, that you possess um, that have enabled you to carry this title that has now been um, given to you. And some of those qualities are things like a positive attitude, um, a drive to be challenged, um, always having an optimistic uh, perspective, uh, even having connections with others. 
And so I want to thank you once again. Um, it's so much more than you having the title. Uh, you have contributed so much to our school and our teachers and to students that will follow in your footsteps. So I hope to see you um, once you uh, graduate from the university and hopefully during university, if you have some time, I hope to see you back at the Bakey High School so you can encourage our students um, to continue with lifelong learning and to make them understand the importance of being a valedictorian and a salutatorian. Once again, I congratulate you. It's a great honor. And I know that your parents are just as proud as I am of you. Congratulations. Our seniors were active in many programs this year, and I would like to highlight a few. The Learn to Lead program. Uh, the Learn to Lead program is a leadership program that exposed our students to different leadership styles from national and inter international leaders. We also had Educational Project London. And we had the Qatar Debate League. These seniors have been active members of the debate club from grade nine, and they've seen some highs and some lows. And Well Cornell High School Medical Conference, which is a research project. This cohort of Debakey graduates has shown promise, commitment, and above all, resilience throughout their time with us. I now have the distinct honor of recognizing students who have completed the requirements for graduation and, and will receive a diploma from Michael E. DeBakey High School for Health Professions, Qatar. These students have received acceptances and over half a million dollars in scholarships from universities locally and across the globe. Graduates, we salute your diligence. And without further ado, congratulations go to graduating with honors, Amr Abbas. Saifuddin Abdul Al. Saif Abu Trika. Shahad Ahmed. Ali. Al Jibouri, Saeed Al Ajmi, Abdurrahman Al Fakhri, Jawahir Al Jassim, Hassan Al Jihani, Bidur Al Khalaf. Ali and Naim, Rashid and Naim, Nasser Al Qahtani, graduating with honors, Ali Al Qaradaghi, Dima Al Saleh, Maryam Al Salus, Muhammad Al Suwaidi. Graduating with honors, Ahmed Athani, Butaina Athani. Graduating with honors, Yusuf Al Haj Hussein, Lutfi Al Khas, Muhammad Al Mutairi, Isa Al Umari. Ismail Al Uda, Abdurrahman Al Zogbi, graduating with honors, Fahad Amir, graduating with honors, Maryam Arabi, Anke Ardik, Tala Bakru. Ali Bayumi, Denise Kanguvin, Hussam Darwish, 
graduating with honors Abdul Aziz Dawle. Ziad Ashar, graduating with honors Shayma Alabib. Noor Al Muqaddam, graduating with honors Mazin Al Raya Al Sheikh. Muhammad Al Fatih Al Sheikh. Ahmed Fadl. Johara Jawas, graduating with honors Maryam Hamid, Umair Hasna, graduating with honors Sara Hasabu, Abdurrahim Hussain, graduating with honors Basmala Hussain. Sara Johar, Mazin Kasir, Iman Malik, Muhammad Muhammad, Dima Murtaja, graduating with honors, Abdullah Mustafa. Graduating with honors, Mia Naamani. Graduating with honors, Muhammad Naim. Graduating with honors, Ahmed Nof. Hussam Nayef. Graduating with honors, Maryam Umar. Kareem Ramadan, Aya Radwan, Jamil Qahir, Muhammad Yusuf, and Maj Zaydan. Congratulations. And now I call the Chief Teaching and Learning Officer Mrs. Nisreen Speta. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Tibeki High School in Qatar, I hereby confer upon each of you your diplomas for high school. I welcome you into the community of educated women and men well prepared to make a difference for the betterment of our communities, countries, and nations. You may now move your tassel to the left. Graduates, on behalf of the Bakey faculty and staff and your families, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your great achievements. Class of 2020, this is your moment of glory. You may throw your caps on a count of three. Are you ready? One, two, and three. Congratulations. We would like to thank you all for joining us today and sharing this special moment with us. Congratulations one more time to our Debakey students and best of luck in your future journey. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the graduation organizing members and Debakey teachers and staff for their hard work and continued support and above all to Dr. Paris for her relentless support and, support and guidance leading Debakey to even great, greater achievements in our bright future. Thank you and good night. <laughs>